Okay, today I'm going to make another video for motion along the strap line uh, because yeah, my online student actually requests for more video about this chapter so yeah, so I just took another I think it's the Pachuban paper last year for Nagri Sambilan Alright, so Okay, so in these chapters Okay, I, before I start to discuss about this this uh, this question, uh, just give me uh, just give me provide you more information about this chapter because some students still feel very confused. Okay, first okay I give you something for sure. Okay, for sure means what? Okay, first we for displacement. Okay, displacement we call it s. Okay, displacement displacement most of the time we will use s to represent displacement all right s is highly related to the distance so whenever the question asks you to find distance you know you have to find s all right you know you have to find s so how you find s if the if the question gives you velocity we know actually s equals to integrate velocity dt okay this is something very useful information but one uh, one issue you will face when you integrate velocity is that when you integrate velocity, you will got your answer, you need to plus C. And then most of the students will feel very confused how can they find the value C. So I, I can teach you one method is in almost all the case, especially in SPM, when S equal to zero, T will equal to zero and C will equal to zero. Okay, this one is almost for sure in SPM syllabus. Of course, if you talk about STPM, IGCSE, or A level, then, then it will be different case. C is not necessarily equal to zero. But then for SPM, yes, most of the time, I, I can say almost 95%, you will got C equal to zero. So you just substitute these two into it. Because what? Because if a particle locates at origin, okay, when the particle locates as origin, this one we call it S equals to zero because at origin, the particle not yet start to move forward. So when S equals to zero, and most of the time T will equal to zero because they haven't start to calculate the, the time. So, so the question will say something like this, pass through a fixed point O. Okay, so you say a particle move along the straight line and pass through the fixed point O. That means the time is start to calculate after he passed through the fixed point O. That means at fixed point O, T equals zero, S will equal to zero. So this one is almost for sure. So you can you can feel very secure to substitute this value into your your S and then you're able to get C equal to zero. Yeah, you have to prove it. Okay, and then some information you can get in my first video okay so i i already said you will always see maximum velocity or maximum or minimum velocity what you need to do is when maximum or minimum we learn about differentiation mean we have to differentiate v toward time will get zero okay if question asked about maximum or minimum displacement or acceleration okay let's say it's displacement this time so that means we have to differentiate s toward dt we have got zero last but not least if you ask about maximum or minimum acceleration acceleration that means we have to differentiate acceleration toward time will equal to zero okay this is some basic information but it's very 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 important and one more thing is very important is that well, whenever you see the word initial, okay, in in the question you can see something like initial velocity, or you can see some initial, initials acceler uh, displacement or initial acceler acceleration. Okay, initial displacement. When you see the word initial, initial, what is the meaning for initial in this chapter? Initial means t equals to zero remember this one whenever you see the word initial mean you have to substitute t equal to zero but initial means actually the time is not yet start to calculate whenever he tell you initial velocity mean you substitute let's say in this case he asks you to find initial velocity that means when t equals to zero velocity equals to 12 means when when before the start uh, the time is starting to calculate the velocity already start with 12 
Okay, so it's very important whenever you see the word initials, please substitute t equals to zero. And then sometimes he will tell you the particle is move right or move left. So I mentioned in the first video, if the particle moving this way, this way is move right, correct or not? So if move right, the velocity will be bigger than zero because the velocity is positive. Okay, if move left, if move left means moving this direction, the velocity will get negative, correct or not? So velocity will less than zero. This is some basic information, but I think it's quite useful in order to help you to solve the question. All right, so if you can understand, okay, so I move on to the question. Okay, so in these cases, it gives you, okay, some information. A particle move along a straight line and pass through a fixed point O. Its velocity is this one, given V equal to T squared minus 8T plus 12. Okay, T is a time in a second. Okay, after passing through O. So T is starting to calculate after passing through O. So S will equal to 0, T will equal to 0. Okay, assume motion to the right is the positive. This is what I mentioned. If the particle move in this way, velocity is positive. All right. Okay, now let's have a look on the question. Okay, he asks you to find the initial velocity of the particle. So I say whenever you see the word initial, so first thing come into your mind is when t equals to zero, when t equals to zero. So, okay, ask uh, for initial velocity, so I will say v equals to t squared minus 8t plus 12. So initial velocity when t equals to zero, v will equal to zero squared plus, uh, minus 8t plus 12. So v equals to 12 ms negative one. Then you got one mark. So you have to understand what is the meaning by initial velocity. This is very important when t equals to zero means initial. All right, for part B, he asks you to find minimum velocity. I say whenever you see minimum or maximum velocity, we have to differentiate velocity to a time and get zero. So this one we call dv dt will equals to zero. This one means minimum velocity. Okay, or, or you can write when, I write short form over here, minimum velocity. All right. Of course, in exam, you couldn't write short form, all right? So that means I know I have to differentiate and then dv dt equals to zero. So I differentiate v to a time. So my dv dt, I have this equation will equals to 2t minus 8, all right? So because of you want to find minimum velocity, so 2t minus 8 equals to zero. So t will equals to 4, all right? Okay, a lot of students stop over here. He say, oh, I, I got the answer t equals to 4. But then this is not the question 1. The question 1, minimum velocity. That means he one velocity. So whenever you got t equals to 4, you have to substitute back to your velocity equation. This is what the, uh, the question 1. Okay, the question is not ask you to find a time when it is minimum velocity. So what I do is when t equals to 4, so my v will equals to 4 square minus 8, 4 plus 12. I just substitute 4 into all the t over here. All right, so I just solve it. I will got 16 minus 32 plus 12. All right, so this one is like plus 12, 20, 20, the negative 4. So v will be negative 4, ms negative 1. This one is minimum velocity. All right, remember to substitute back. Don't stop at this step. All right, then we go for c. Okay, C. What the question one for C? He asks you to find about range. Okay, whenever you see range, uh, this word range means your answer have to live in this kind of symbol. All right, means bigger or smaller or bigger or equal or smaller or equal. This is the meaning for range. Okay, remember this one. So whenever you see range, your answer have to in this form. Means you cannot in equal form. Uh, cannot in equal form. All right, so. He asks us to find the range value of t during the particle if move left. Move left is this direction. Just I just mentioned just now, when you move this direction means what? Velocity will less than zero. Correct or not? Because velocity move right is positive and move left is negative. Negative means less than zero. So we got our velocity equation here. So that means our velocity is this one, right? t squared minus 8t plus 12 less than zero. This is V, I just substitute V into it. Okay, this is my V. So less than zero, then 
Obviously, I can easily factorize it less than zero. So this is t, this is t, and this is six and two minus minus. All right, this one you of course you need to have some basic knowledge about inequality. So this is what if I draw out the diagram, it will look something like this. Two is here, six is here because you assume when when this one equals to zero. Okay, you assume t minus two, t minus six equals to zero. You have got t equals to two or t equals to six, isn't it? So when you get smaller, mean you have got something on the middle. So what is your range of t? If you learn about inequality, you know this one called t will on between two and six. So this is your range of range values of t. Okay, if you got bigger, mean it's outside, correct or not? If you got smaller, mean it's on the middle. And then you must be careful of this symbol. If do not have equal, here you shouldn't put the value, uh, the signs of equal. All right. Last part. Okay. Last part normally is the difficult part. Yeah, because this one will give you four marks for this one. He asks you to find total distance. Okay. Whenever the question asks you to find total distance, I want you to do one thing: is you substitute v equals to zero. Because you substitute v equals to zero. What is the purpose of this one? To f this is to find whether the particle got mag Newton or not. To find, okay, to find whether, oops, whether the particle got mag Newton or not. Newton or not. Okay, it's a little bit broken my English, but I just hope you can understand. Because what? If the particle is moving on the straight line, whenever the particle want to make U turn, whenever the particle want to make U turn, here the velocity will stop. Then only the particle will make U turn. So v will equal to zero when the particle make U turn. So we want to know at which second actually the particle make U turn. So we always substitute v equal to zero because if the particle make U turn, you will got different distance. All right, this is something very important. So I just got smaller than zero, so I just rearrange my equation. So t square minus eight t plus twelve equals to zero. So basically, I will got back exactly the same thing. T minus two, t minus six equals to zero. So t will equals to two, or t will equals to six. That means actually the particle make you turn. At the second second, and also make another U turn at the sixth second. But now the question asks us to find the first four second. So we just ignore the sixth second because we didn't go so far. That mean, that mean what? Okay, if the particle moving to the right hand side, that mean he will going to make U turn when t equals to two. This one is t equals to zero. Let's say he start from here. And then he going to continue until t equals to four. Of course, I do not know where is exactly the t equals to four, but this is the idea, right? So mean t equals to zero, the particle is move until the two second the particle make U turn, right? Of course, if you want to find the distance, is you got two methods. One method is straight away integrate. Of course, in this video, I teach you the e easier methods. Of course. In the last video, actually, I teach another method, but in this video, I decide to teach you another method also. All right. So, you want first four second. So what I you want you to understand is displacement will equals to integrate velocity dt. Okay, all of you know about this one. So if I want to find total distance, okay, what I will do is he make you turn at the t equals to two, right? I will integrate velocity from zeros to two plus. I integrate the velocity from two to four because this question actually he asked about first four second. First four second means I sum up has to be four, and then whenever he make U turn, then I I just separate it. Let's say this time it make U turn is at t equals to three, then I will do like this: zero to three, and then three to four. Right? If he make U turn at one, so I will do something like this: t uh, zeros to one, and then one to four. Means we split up. This one, whenever the particle make U turn, alright. So what I do is, it asks us to find distance. We know we integrate velocity, we will get U turn. Uh, we integrate velocity, we will get the time. Okay. So what we need to do is, okay. So I will integrate velocity. 
from zeros to two, and then I plus, I integrate velocity from two to four. Because what we know is, when we integrate velocity, we actually will get displacement. And I say displacement is highly related to the, to the uh, distance. Okay, so integrate velocity, okay, let me write out my velocity over here. My velocity equals to t squared minus 8t plus 12. All right, so if you integrate, you have the limit, that means you no need to find the value for c. So it's very simple, so I just integrate it. So this one is called t cubed over 3 minus 8t squared over 2 plus 12t. Okay, 2, 0. Of course, this one is exactly the same with this one. So I just copy. Of course, if you're smart enough, you know actually this one you can easily simplify. 1 and 4. Right, so this one called minus 4t squared plus 12t. And then the limit will be 2 to 4. All right, and then you just substitute the value into it. You can easily get the answer. Okay, so okay, let me substitute quickly. So this one we'll call 8 over 3 minus 4, 4 is 16 plus 24. Okay, minus 0, 0, everything will get 0. So plus this one. Okay, this one, I substitute 4, it will be 64 over 3 minus this one will be 16 minus 64 plus uh, 48 and then I need to minus the 2 here okay this one is different huh? because this one you have to minus whatever exactly same with this one so with 8 over 3 this one actually is positive 8 okay I solve here already so of course you can get the final answer by press calculator but if you are good enough actually you don't need to press calculator <laughs> okay that press so it's 8 over 3 this one called 8 over 3 plus 8 isn't it so it will be plus 8 so therefore here I will got 22 over 3 okay plus this one okay we have to solve this one so this exactly same with this one right so I will write minus 32 over 3 so of course I do the simple calculation for this one Okay, so first I use negative 64 plus 48 first. I solve this one first. And then I plus 64 over 3. So it will be 64 over 3. So this one I got 16 over 3. Alright. Okay, then I use this one minus this one. Alright. Whenever you plus the uh, you plus the distance, because this one you might get negative. But you get negative, it doesn't mean, because distance, we know distance actually cannot have negative. But then displacement can have negative. What is the meaning for displacement have negative for this one? After you solve, you got negative 16 over 3, isn't it? That means actually the distance is like, okay, this is 0, and then here will be negative 16 over 3. That means the distance over here is still 16 over 3. So whenever you do like this, if you got the negative, what you need to do is you add the modulus for it. So this one will be 32 over 3 plus 16 over 3. So you will got 48 over 3, which is 16 meter. So I believe this one is the final answer and then this one is the total distance for it. Alright, I hope this video can help you a lot. Thanks for watching.